Hey everybody, Adam Savage at Prop Store down in Los Angeles, and that could mean only one thing. We're going to handle some beautiful pieces of film history here. Hello, Brandon. Hey, Adam. Got Hello. a couple of good ones to show you. You really do, and these are both made by our friends at Weta Workshop. Yes, yeah, they do amazing work. I got to go down there once a number of years ago. I know you go down there, what, every, once a month? <laughs> if we can. Uh, it, it, those guys are part of our extended tested family, uh, and we love them. This is the Morgul Blade. Yeah, the Witch King Dagger. Dude. I love, love, love the finish on this one. The, it, the aging of the blade is particularly wonderful. So this is, this is uh, the scene on Weathertop when, when Frodo gets stabbed yes. uh, by the Witch King. This is, the, this is uh, a version of that blade. Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. And you can see the inscription on the blade there, which sort of tells the history of the piece. Essentially, this was given to Sideshow Toys. And as I understand it, the Sideshow Toys had some crew who was visiting the production uh, while they were shooting. Yeah. And, and they were given this as a reference piece for the line of replicas they were going to produce. This along with a number of other Lord of the Rings props. And, and they're sort of a batch of props that is now known amongst collectors as, oh yeah, one of the Sideshow pieces. Yes, because specifically Weta put in this etching. Sideshow toy, Witch King dagger, June 02. Yeah. So long ago. Yeah. Even the little Weta bug there at the top of the bug. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. Um, the, given the fact that this is a resin handle, these are not steel, and it's an aluminum ground blade, you're right. The finish is completely, insanely perfect. Yeah. I, I also happen to think that the Sideshow replica of this, which I own, is one of the better replica sword blades ever made. Did they do a good job of recreating they the, the weathering? They did a fantastic tear? job okay. of the weathering. I can see some things I'm going to do to more accuratize it. Okay. There's a little more brown rust than I expected. It's it's magnificent. Um, I have a funny uh, tested Weta story to tell you about this blade. Okay. So the very first time Norm and Joey and I are visiting Weta, we got there to uh, to Wellington and we got to the front door of their offices and it was early in the morning and we hadn't been let in yet, so we're just sitting on the stairs. And while we're there, this large, large gentleman comes over. Uh, later we'd find out his name is Shane Rungi. Uh, and Shane is this big Mori guy and he's holding a Morgul blade mm -hmm. and he's attempting in front of us in the parking lot, he's attempting to take a selfie with the blade. And I'm like, Norm, go help him take a picture. And Norm <laughs> helps him take a picture and then Shane says, oh yeah, this is the blade I stabbed Frodo with. And then we realize we're talking to the, the actor that King. played the Witch yeah. King in that yeah. scene. I think he played a lot of roles. Of Shane Orgs, played right? tons and tons of orcs. He's an yeah. amazing performer. He was in a film we made with Weta called A Farewell to Arms. He played a monster for us oh, and awesome. was also our stunt coordinator for that. Uh, so we feel a real connection to this piece. Okay. It is like our, it's like our entry into the family that was Weta, that yeah. is Weta. Very cool. Well, I know his name, so he's, he's definitely a, a memorable part of those productions. And that is it's lovely to see it up close, especially after having so, spent so much time with the sideshow, with the sideshow version. Um, I mean, all the Weta stuff is, is just great. You know, the craftsmanship, the attention to detail, as you know. The swords, Peter Lyon's been the guy doing it for many, many years, yes. right? Going My back sword to these. teacher. <laughs> yes, right. You've, yeah, you're, you're the apprentice now. You could make one of these. Uh, someday I may be good <laughs> enough to, to try making one of those. And actually, uh, on our left here, we have something that I, I, it makes me exhausted just thinking about it, a, a genuinely massive blade. Can I pull the top off? Yeah, and, and the difference with this one is, A, it's a replica, but B, it's real, right? Like this, this is aluminum, that is. Right, this a, is a stunt thing, this is made for using on this set. This is proppy, that is. What we're about to reveal here is a genuine sword. Uh, and this is. Uh, you can just tell, I mean, look at that blade. Jeez, look at the size of it. Good Lord, this is Orcrus. This is Thorin's blade from The Hobbit. Film. Yes, that's right, yeah. And um, so, size and... for a human size actor, which means it's absolutely huge. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> what do you guess it weighs? 15 pounds? Yeah. yeah. Is that about right? Uh, I don't know, oh. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> it is, I will tell you, so I first saw a version of Orcrus at Neil Stevenson's place up in Seattle, uh, when, uh, because they had one at Magic Leap. But then I mentioned it to Peter Lyon. I said, man, I saw one of your Orchrist, Orchrist blades. And Peter Lyon was like, 
those blades are so tiring to make really? because these are hand ground. He is yeah. sitting there on a belt, hand grinding yeah. th these details, these facets, these yeah. topography. And do they make these sharp? Is it an um, actual sharp blade? No, I don't think, no. They are not allowed to export, if I remember correctly, they're not allowed to export right. a sharp a sharp blade. Because it would be a serious weapon. But, but this is actually, I mean, that's the thing is you're right. This, this is a genuine weapon. This would right. be considered usable on any battlefield. I mean, yeah. the shape notwithstanding. Yeah. yeah. And it's full tang. It's been peened all the way to the end. Oh my God, there's even... Jewels in there. There's Look even jewels in the base. Yeah. And as I understand it on the Lord of the Rings films and I think the Hobbit films, they did generally make one or two examples of each sword in steel, specifically for the purpose of, you know, a close-up shot yeah. or just for the actor understanding the weight of it. Yeah. Most of the time they're probably carrying an aluminum version, which would be more like the Witch King dagger, right. much lighter. Right. But for the super close-ups, there were these these were made and in actual steel. The hero heroes. So this is I mean, the thing is about when you say that it's a replica this is part of their signature series. Yes. They release a few of, of select blades that Peter hand builds with his team. Yes. I mean, so in every way, it matches the it's screen the used thing. original. Right, right. Even more because it's actually a usable. Yeah. I, I guess if you, wanted to, if you wanted to take this out to the S. Sorry, tablecloth. But I heard it <laughs> ring. Did you hear that? That's nice. That's satisfying. Lovely. I also love, I love this, um, the grip here, that it's like the tooth of some large beast. Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought about that. But yeah, I, I guess that's cast, cast resin. It looks like it, but with a and real, decorated with another that steel is a piece. genuine yeah. steel pommel. Yeah. Which is, again, I, I, there's not a flat edge on this thing. This is, this is effectively sculpted in metal by hand. And I think this this specific Master Swordsmith edition, yeah. they do limited runs between like 30 and 50 of, mm -hmm. of each sword. Yeah. And they made a number of them now for the Lord of the Rings films and the Hobbit films. It's basically as close as you're going to get, certainly to a hero version, a steel blade version. Well, um, I, I actually own one of their Boromirs of okay. this series. Okay. And it is one of the prized pieces in my collection. Okay. So you're into it. Well, when I came in, when I walked in this morning and I saw this closed box, I was like, oh, it's a Weta sword. Because I know they ship them in these. Yeah. Be Just the case is beautiful. Well, and when you, when you get this, actually, there's a piece of paper that says, don't store your sword in here. Oh, why is that? Well, it, it, it's wood. It's a natural material, so it could off-gas. They actually recommend that, like, while it is great for shipping, you don't want to just let this live in there permanently. You're kind of better off putting it up on the wall and making sure people don't touch it with their fingers. So is this the mount? Uh, I is guess this will be the mount. Yeah. 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 Okay. Understood. Lovely replicas. I mean, in the world of replicas, when you can get something made by... The real maker. It's I'm, like having Terry English make a suit of armor for indeed. you. It's as good as it gets. So to have this hand ground on the bench by the same guy who did all the ones in the movie, yeah. it, you're never going to get anything closer. No. Uh, the other thing that I love about Weta's work up close and the thing that the replicas often fall apart on is the replica swords are often done where it's using laser etching or some mm. industrial process to create the etched pattern. Whereas at Weta, they're still using uh, resist and ferric chlorides and other acids to do the etching. And there's some marvelous little irregularities in there that are oh, yeah. super accurate to real armor and how, how real things get made. If there's anything, if there's one issue I have with replicas, it's often that they're quite, they're too perfect. Yeah, I and, see what you're saying. you know, there's a lot more sort of hand work visible in the thing. So would this whole panel here have been etched out? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they would completely do all that and then do the colorizing on there. And what do you think brings the color into it? That's a good question. It looks like it could just be a, a sort of a, a, a translucent blue lacquer. Yeah. You know, that they put on and then take off some. Yeah, yeah. As I definitely feel like I can see the steel underneath there. Beautiful piece. It is ridiculous. That is... <laughs> Just the size of it is outrageous. It is, just, it is, it's tiring to hold. I can't even imagine what it was like for Peter to grind it. But I'll tell you, I've seen the look on his face. It's not fun. I wonder how many they did because they would have had to do these full size versions and the scale double versions, which would be smaller. For the, d yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Lord of the Rings movies have fantastic swords. So they really do. Some have... of the best swords ever made for film, honestly, in my opinion. And I love that we've got the aluminum stunt here and the 
absolute full tang battle ready version here. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brandon, they're great pieces. This auction is coming up later this month. Yeah, this is June 28th to June 30th, actually taking place at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah, I don't know if they normally have swords there, but uh, there'll be a couple of that, couple of that day. Excellent. Brandon, thank you so much. Loved getting to touch these.